Hello, good day to you. Good day to you. And my name is Theo, and we are back to doing petroleum downstream crash course. And in our last video, we have talked about a crude distillation unit, specifically the atmospheric tower and the vacuum tower. Now what's the point of learning how these two towers operate? Uh, as we know, our end result is to make money. Money is the objective of the refinery. And how do we actually make the most amount of money? We need to control the product quality and quantity. So with higher product quality and quantity, you're going to make lots more money. And how do you control the quality and, quali quality and quantity of your petroleum products? You have to monitor and control the performance of distillation towers. Now this is a large part of what the, the chemical engineers actually do in the refinery, all right? which is why they are paid so handsomely for their jobs and why each of us can enjoy our fuels that we enjoy every day, we got to use every day, in fact. So just want to give you a background into how this is actually done. It is just an introduction. I mean, there are people who have actually done it. I have not. But uh, there are some books out there that have described uh, some of the methods you can use to control product quality and quantity. So let's talk about quantity first. All right, so how, how do you control the product quantity? Now let's say you have a simplified diagram of the crude distillation unit, which is the atmospheric and uh, vacuum tower. I'll just put it together. At the bottom, you have asphalt. You have vacuum gas oil here. AGO. Caro. Oh no. Light gas oil, which is diesel. Let me just, just draw here, huh? well, for the sake of neatness and presentation. Just do it like that. Light gas oil, caro, naphtha, and of course, gas. Okay, so usually naphtha will be used to get the petrol or gasoline range. The gasoline range is around here, jet fuel here diesel here and of course uh, these these three products are one of the main uh, what do you call it the main uh, desired products of your distillation of a petroleum refinery so so we know how how do we actually increase the quantity of all these products and do it in such a way that this spec the specs of the fuel are maintained. Now, one thing we can do is play with boiling range. All right, play with boiling range. Now, what do I mean by that? You've seen before that light straight run naphtha has a boiling range of 30 to 90 Cs. Heavy naphtha around 90 to 200. Carol, 200 to 270, light gas oil, 270 to 330, or is it 320, 320Cs, all these are in degrees, atmospheric gas oil, that's about the highest, 320 to 420. 
Well, you might have seen before that the temperature ranges for each of these fractions are not always consistent in every website you see. Our question is, why? Well, <clears throat> for one thing, there each, uh, each fraction can have a range of boiling ranges. For example, I give you heavy naphtha. You can get the 80 to 190 range. Or you can also get a 90 to 160 range. Or 166. Or 170. Let's put around 170. You can get your heavy naphtha at this range or this range. <coughs> and why is that so? Now you notice that in this case, in this case, uh, I'm getting my product with a boiling range of 80 to 190. Now for the same barrel, if I use this boiling range of product, how much uh, product will I get in this boiling range? Let's say you have about 20 gallons. I'm just throwing numbers from thin air, just so you get a point. But if I have a, a smaller boiling range to get my product from, maybe I'll get 14 gallons because some of the products from the having boiling range of 80 to 90 degrees uh, C are not in this cut and the product from 170 to 190 degrees C will not be found in this product but will be found here. So this actually contains more product than this if you are taking the boiling range from the same barrel. If you are refining the if you're refining the same barrel and you're using different boiling ranges. So one way to control quantity, you can control boiling range. And why would you do why would you want to reduce the boiling range of let's say naphtha? So let's say one day you find that hey my gasoline prices have plummeted. They have dropped so much that it's no longer very good for me to sell gasoline. So what do you do? As a refinery, you're looking at all these products. Say, yeah, I don't want to be producing this. I want to be producing maybe more of kerosene. So some guy, some manager may decide, hey, I'll just take 90 to 170 here, right? Then kerosene will be 170 to 270. It's like, hey, yes, I have less heavy naphtha, but I have more stuff for my kerosene. So if kerosene uh, is uh, more demanded, such that the price is a lot higher, I might want to do something like this so that I have decreased my unwanted products and increased the pricier products. That way I can make more money. So that's the idea behind the not so standard, uh, what do you call it? Not so standard kind of boiling ranges that you see for each one. And the only the only limitation you have with this is, of course, that your boiling ranges must be within the specifications of the fuel that are provided. So kerosene, you uh, for jet jet fuel like uh, jet A one, jet A one. Excuse me, yeah. Jet A1. Oh boy, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh. Alright. Back on topic. Jet A1. Alright. So we have a. A few specifications, such as final boiling point, okay? So they say it's 300 degrees C max. So meaning to say, I can even take some of the cut from here, the light gas oil component, and put it into my kerosene. So instead of 270, I can have 300. 
if I want to maximize my kerosene, then my light gas oil will be 300 to 320. That means I don't take as much uh, diesel fuel. All right. Now, secondly, it has a specification for 10% distillation. What is 10% distillation? So usually when you have your ASTM test, remember in a few videos ago, we we'll have a test like D86 or D2892, but usually D86 is used for faster testing. So you have some of the kerosene here, and when they mean 10% distillation, they say, hey, after I've heated, and 10% of the volume of your original kerosene is now in this flask, the first, the lightest 10% has evaporated. And what is the temperature? They require, they require 205 degrees C max. Okay? So that, that kind of limits, that kind of limits the, uh, what do you call that? It kind of limits the amount of uh, volatile substances you can have in your kerosene. So after I evaporate 10 degree, 10% uh, of my kerosene, my boiling range should at most be 205 degrees. All right. And what does that mean? Can I have more or less light stuff or heavy stuff? So if 205 degrees means maximum and I can go lower, that means, uh, that means my 10% distillation can, can be 200 degrees C. So what does that mean? That means my first te after evaporating 10% of the most volatile, my temperature of the flask will be 200 degrees C. This means that uh, there's still more light component inside this flask here, meaning to say, hey, a lower temperature, lower boiling temperature, means more volatile components. So, jet A1 is okay with more volatile components. So I can have it lower but not higher. So you see, taking taking lots of stuff from the heavy naphtha is not going to be a problem for Jet A1. So this is just one example of the limits that are being imposed on uh, kerosene or jet fuel. All right, but I can't take too much of my diesel to put it into my carol. Why? Because the final boiling point is three hundred degrees C max. If I do above 310, I'll be off spec and I cannot sell it to the customer. All right. So that's just one example. You can increase the quantity of product. Now, in the next video, we can continue more about the product quality and how we are going to actually control that product quality. Okay. See ya.